Nice, nice um, talking to you today. Um, let me ask you, uh, you as a moderator today, um, what is your general picture? What are the discussions that are going on in today's field? Yeah, well, of course, uh, today's a really important uh, and unique day because it's the multi-stakeholder dialogue day from this uh, World Water Celebration. Uh, and what's particularly interesting about it is, of course, it's multi-stakeholder. We have representatives from government, from civil society, from religious organisations, from youth organisations. And it's already very clear in the discussions, although we're still early in the day, that uh, the common shared concern here is that water issues need to be ramped up the international agenda. There's simply not enough attention being given to water, both fresh and saline, on the international agenda, and in fact on the national and local agendas. So the sorts of things that are coming through already, which I think are important, as, as the importance firstly of recognising the importance of water in all policy discussions. Anything that impacts on water needs to be looked at carefully. Secondly, there's the issue of access, uh, equity, uh, how we can take steps together, and this is going to involve partnerships between governments, business and civil society, to ensure that where there are water shortages, we're working together to ensure that there's greater access to fresh, clean uh, drinking water for all communities. That includes sanitation. A uh, key issue for all countries is, in fact, how we can use water more efficiently uh, without polluting it uh, so that we have more water available for everyone, particularly poor communities where sickness caused by polluted water can reduce the capacity of women and children to attend school, to feed their families, to grow crops and so forth. So the, the essentiality of water in all of our conversations, whether it's about development, whether it's about energy, whether it's about cities, whether it's about countrysides, whether it's about transportation, all needs to take into account that this precious commodity water is actually used sensibly. Yeah? Uh, and then of course there are a bunch of issues coming through as well uh, in relation to uh, technologies, uh, how we use technology and finance to ensure that we have sensible dams and storage, that we have sensible wastewater processes, that we can process wastewater and return it to the water cycle. Uh, and then of course uh, the big issue that everyone knows about in terms of climate change, uh, where climate change is happening and will continue to happen. We don't know how fast and what its impacts will be and where, but, but what we already know is that we're locked into uh, a period where there's going to be increasingly greater rainfalls in some areas and less rain in other areas. Now that's at the same time as the world is moving by 2050 to a population of about 9 billion people. In other words, between now and 2050, we're adding two Chinas to the world's population. And not only two Chinas, but with Chinese and Indian middle classes growing, demand for water and services that are based on water is going to increase. So that amplifies the need for really urgent collaborative action at the international level, uh, as well as bottom up at the local levels and the national levels, to get water policies that actually consistently manage water well, measure our use of it, encourage all players, individuals, companies, governments, to use water efficiently, to raise awareness around water use, to educate people about that. Education is the most important single thing here, particularly for women and, and the children, because they're the ones who have the ultimate responsibility and indeed the worst impacts of water shortages. Uh, and to try and work co collaboratively together on the many, many different solutions that there are, because they will be local solutions, to issues of water management. Uh, but uh, So I think the key thing from this meeting is really going to be uh, how we can do that, what the priorities are, and send a clear message to the policy makers who are shaping the development goals beyond 2015 of water being the beating heart of the future of human survival.